this morning. It was supposed to be rainy and windy and cold. And, uh, but actually, it's actually very nice. It only proves that man can predict all he wants, but the only sure thing in this world is Jesus lives and God is still on his throne. Because the Son of God has risen from the grave, his love warms our hearts. All across the country this morning and all across the world, people are not meeting in churches. They're meeting in small groups. Some people in front of their smart TV, some in front of their computer, and some people by themselves just looking at their cell phone. But families are in meetings in small groups. And you know, that's the way it was with the early church. The early Christians met in home churches and in small groups in their homes and on the seashore. And if you stop and think about it, that's what we're doing right now. We're being the church no matter where we're at. And what it matters this morning is who we are worshiping. It's Jesus Christ. And praise God for technology in this time like this. That we can praise our risen Lord who reigns forever. Let's pray, shall we? Oh, Father God, we come to give you praise. And we thank you for the wonderful gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the gift of salvation to all who trust him, who come to him. We come to lift our hearts and our hands and our minds to you in praise for your indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. We praise you for the sacrifice that he made on our behalf and for your unconditional love that never ends. We worship you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the heart. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those who hope in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
message is for the kids, and I bet many of you got something like this this morning. Maybe you had a little stuffed animal in there, or maybe a car, or a video game, or something, and you got all kinds of little eggs that had wonderful things inside, and ooh, Snickers, my favorite. All of these eggs have something inside, but you know what? If you were really blessed, you got one that had nothing. Because this is what Easter is all about. This represents that the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. And that's the sweetest thing you can possibly have in your life. We're here today because, not because of Easter baskets and Easter egg hunts and all those fun things we do, but because Jesus is alive, the tomb is empty. So as you're doing all your fun activities today, remember that, if you will. And put a, put a little egg out in front of yourself with, with it open, an open like this and empty so you will remember. Let's have a prayer, shall we? Oh, Jesus, we're so thankful that you are so sweet. And you told us to taste and sweet and see that you are really good. We are thankful this morning for you. Bless all of the children wherever they're at. We give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if we're here this morning and things are different, we need to stop and pause and pray for our church family all over the world. Our brothers and sisters of every nationality and every creed and every color. Because what's affecting us is affecting them. If people are alone and people are grieving and people are uncertain, all over the world. So let's just stop and pray right now for the body of Christ. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give glory and honor and praise to your name. Though we're not together physically as the body of Christ, we are joined together by your Holy Spirit. We have many concerns for those who are ill and those who are lonely. Remind them that this too shall pass and that you are still on the throne. And anything and everything that happens to us on this earth is just another opportunity to trust you. Give strength to the weak at heart. Give courage to the timid. Give boldness to our witness and help us stand for what is right and true in this evil world in which we live. We know one of these days we'll get back together, but most important than that, we know one of these days Jesus is coming back for all who love him, all who have made it heart right in their heart with him, and we will come and reign with you, and until then, Lord, we just give you honor. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray, amen. man who wrote in as well with my soul relocated his business to Europe and he sent for his family and got everything ready for them. And on their journey, the ship encountered uh, that had his family on it encountered a great storm and they were all lost at sea. And the man came back to America and got on the ship and he told the captain, when you think you've gotten to the place where my family went down, tell me. I want to know right there in the middle of the ocean when he realized about where his family had lost their lives his wife and his precious children he birthed this song it is well with my soul many of us are going through hard times right now and i hope this song ministers peace to your heart as it did to the man that wrote this song
our scripture today comes from Matthew 28 and Luke 24 as we reaccount what happened on that resurrection morning. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look in the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook, and they became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come, come and see the place where he lay. And then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going to go ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him. Now I've told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him and fell at his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go quickly to Galilee, and there they will see me. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others, and it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and all the other women who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe them. They didn't believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense to them. Peter, however, got up and he ran to the tomb, and bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. You know, it's amazing. Jesus' followers had been with him for three and a half years. Jesus had told them at least three times and three different occasions that he was going to die at the hands of evil men. He was going to be buried, but he was going to rise again on the third day, but yet Jesus' followers did not believe yet. You know, even today, some people refuse to believe anything their own intellect cannot figure out. We were told not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge God and he would direct every path. We've also been told that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Let me ask you a question. Would you come up with the idea of saving the world by dying for it? Would you have come up with a way of saving the world by rising again from the dead for it? Not in a million years. And neither did the disciples think that this could happen either, even though Jesus had told them. Well, if they did believe, let me tell you what I think would have happened. They would have been waiting outside that tomb on Sunday morning with all kinds of celebration stuff, with a band and all kinds of people getting ready to dance and sing, and they'd have a church potluck dinner ready to pass around the minute Jesus stepped out of the grave. But no, they didn't believe yet. They were hurting, and they were hiding. They were grieving and disillusioned, and they were fearful for good reason. Because if they made themselves known to the Romans, perchance they would have been crucified as well. To them, all those men and women that followed Jesus, there was no hope. It was gone. Jesus was dead. You know, we have people even today, since we've been forced to live in this uh, isolation, that feel the same way. They have no hope. Did you know that all the suffering we go through externally and internally 
is why Jesus came to live and die and rise. He came to give us new life, and he came to give us hope. He came to give us hope where it looks like there is no hope. Jesus told us that we have suffering in this fallen world, but he also said that he had overcome it for us by the blood that he shed on the cross. He came to give us hope. I remember the Apostle Paul telling us not to be ignorant. Don't act like people who live without hope in this world. Jesus told his disciples three times before he was arrested. And Jesus also told us, if you follow me, people are going to hate you because of me. Jesus said, I've told you all these things so that you might trust in me and be unshakable and have overwhelming assurance no matter what happens in and through your lives. He said, I told you all these things that you would have peace in the midst of trouble. But they didn't get it yet any more than some people get it today. Some folks still think that Jesus rising from the dead is just a bunch of nonsense, just a myth from those ancient people. They'd rather put their trust in money or in politics or in fame or other people or even in themselves. Too many people are just like those disciples who didn't believe at first. When the women came rushing back and said, he's alive, he's alive, we've seen him. He's risen. But they thought it was just nonsense. And let me tell you something, when people really meet the risen Lord, they are changed forever from the inside out. Hallelujah. Praise God, the Bible and the historians of that day wrote down the accounts and wrote the accounts of Jesus showing himself to the disciples several times into over 500 people after Jesus rose from the dead. You know, those very same disciples would later write about their own failings. They would write about how they were afraid and how they hid and how the women would try to, to tell them the truth. You know what? If I was writing my memoirs, I would write something good about myself. But they wrote the truth. They wrote the truth. Even though they ended up being persecuted and beaten and jailed and eventually murdered for their belief in this risen Lord, they never wavered from the truth. Friends, God is a God of miracles even today. But the greatest miracle of them all is when he saves us from our sins. And he raises us up out of the pit of death and calls us a person of worth, person worthy of every single drop of blood that he shed for us. And guess what? He's coming back. He's coming back to gather all those who have given their hearts and their lives and their minds to him. And he will come for you if you ask Jesus into your heart and if you've repented of your sins. You know, in this godless world, you'll continue to have experiences of difficulties. But take heart. Jesus has said, because I live, I've conquered hell, death, and the grave for you. And you don't have to worry. I've got your back covered, honey. And I'm coming back for you. Jesus comforts us in our struggles. Do you know why? It's so that you and I can comfort others when we come across troubled people. That's why God sent two angels to comfort and encourage the fearful women at the tomb. He sent those angels to give them hope. In the Gospel of John, Jesus himself appeared to Mary Magdalene and told her to go tell the men that were hiding in fear that he was alive and he was going to ascend to his father and our father. He told them that so that they could have hope too. And then he said, go tell them to meet me in Galilee. I'm going to go ahead of you. Wow, what an amazing experience to know that Jesus was alive and they were going to get to see him again. I imagine they had quite a celebration. You see, when God rescues us in answer to our prayers, other people will be glorified. We'll glorify God. 
God when we witness to that. And he did deliver us from mortal danger in the past, and we are confident that he'll continue to deliver us even today. He always has, and he always will. He will rescue us because you and I are praying for the world in which we live. Jesus said, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. They're powerful and they're strong. We can move mighty mountains through prayer. Do you believe that this morning? Paul said, as a result of our prayers, many will give thanks to God because so many prayers for our safety have been answered. He said that for his day, and the same thing is true for the day in which we live. Paul even said, we may get knocked down, but we're going to get right up and we're going to keep on fighting. We may have trouble and we may have thing. We might be pressed in on every side, but we're not going to be crushed and we're not going to be broken. We may be perplexed and confused about what's going on, but we don't have to give up and we don't have to quit. And you know, maybe even someday we might be hunted down for our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because those who hate God hate us. But God will never abandon his children. And no matter how long the trouble lasts, no matter how long we have to be separated, Jesus has promised that he will never, ever leave us or forsake us. Here's something I want us to understand. The scriptures tell us this. For our present troubles will never compare with the rewards God has for those who love him and serve him. Yet when we persevere, when we do not faint, those troubles produce immeasurable glory that will last forever and forever. That's what these women and all the disciples have come to understand in time. Before too long, they would see Jesus face to face. They would touch the nail prints in his hands. They would hear him. They would speak with him. And he would reteach them all those things they didn't understand before. I can imagine how confused and perplexed they were and fearful before Jesus rose from the dead. But you know, on that Thursday, before he rose, Jesus was arrested and he had that fake trial. And he was beaten and he unmercifully and a crown of thorns was crushed on his head. By noon on Friday, Jesus was crucified by three nails on a cross. And guess what? Your sins and mine were nailed to that cross with him. And then he died and he was buried. But we're here this morning because very early on that first day of the week, Sunday morning, that stone was rolled away. Not so Jesus could get out. He didn't need any help. It's so we sinful people could get in and see that the tomb was empty just as Jesus has said. So we could believe not just with our heads but with our hearts that he would save us and he would live in us and he would guide us through all the troubles that we're going to have in this world every single day of our lives. And someday when we die, we will go to live in paradise with him where there's no more crying, no more pain, no more sickness, no more separation. And we'll be living in the light because Jesus is the light. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we don't need to focus on the problems. Yes, we have them. But rather we can look forward to what we have not seen yet. Just like the disciples. For the, the troubles that we see now will soon be over. For the joys that will come will last forever. Jesus alone has paved the way of future of hope for you and me. And eternity in paradise for those who believe. If you're willing to trust what you cannot see yet. Because Jesus lives, you and I can face tomorrow. And you and I can face right now, and we can live in the sure hope that Jesus is with us forever and forever and forever. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that this is not just a story, but truly reality. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You live so we can live too. Thank you for what you've done for us. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Because Jesus lives, we have hope. Because he lives, we can do anything. Let us sing. Because he lives. <laughs> Jesus Christ and all that is pleasing to him. To him 